Good morning and welcome back to Planner Craft. I'm Natalie and today we are going to be creating a masculine themed thank you card. So I'm just going to hold off for a few moments while everybody joins us. Please do say hello in the chat and I should be able to see your comments pop up. And they'll also pop up at the bottom of the screen. So just here in this white section, hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay, so before I get too far, I have very quickly cleaned down my mat and just restuck it very lightly. It's quite important that lightly bit. So if you're wondering how to do that, any, any type of scraper will do. Wrap it with a baby wipe, scrub all over, a little bit of elbow grease, and then very lightly go over with a two-way glue. Very, 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 very lightly. Especially as we're going to be using this pretty much straight away. So we're, we're going to let that dry a bit longer. Good morning, Deb, on YouTube. And welcome. And hopefully everything is looking good to go. So let's jump in with both feet and let's get started. So underneath hiding, I have a nice six by 12 bit of card. I think it's eight by 12, maybe it's a quarter. Let me check that one, shall we? Make that eight by eh, 16. Next size up. <laughs> Uh, can you tell I change my mind which card I'm going to do? Okay, so I thought I'd go with blue. It's a bit different for me. I, I tend to start off with white base, but blue's interesting. And morning, Lorraine, and morning, Linda, and morning, Thea. Well, afternoon to Lorraine in Spain. So, let's dive on in. I'm going to change view to the Scan and Cut like so and then we can get a bit more into our machine so I thought it'd be really fun to try and do as much as we can in the machine today but I'm also going to probably end up using a little bit of canvas just because certain things are easier so I thought I'd talk a bit, a bit when you should be changing between the two so let's go into our pattern first of all we're going to go into our text and you want something that's going to be nice and bold. So I'm going to go into our really bold sans serif text. Good morning, Carol. And let's start with the first line. So I'm thinking of doing these in like two lines. So I've got thank and then you. So if we go and just do thank like so, then what we can sometimes find is that actually it's not close enough for what we need. But I thought I would give it a go and so that it's nice and easy for you guys rather than having to go T H A N K. So let's we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to go OK to pop that onto my mat. And at this point, I never worry about size because it's it's just easier to do it at the next stage. But what you do want to pay attention to is your spacing, okay? So on your machine, you can't use negative spacing in the same way that you can in Canvas. So this is the first point where you might go, well, actually, for whatever word I'm doing, I could do with going to a negative spacing. That's the first time to go to Canvas. So let's add that onto our mat, like so. And... When we tap on it, you're going to see it's all as one shape. So I'm going to move that down. Now, bear in mind, our card is larger than our mat at the moment. And I'm going to go into Edit, Object Edit, and Resize. Now, if you're working with something that is very obviously inches, like I am with my 8 by 16 inch card, then you will probably want to go on your little spanner and change your size to inches. So I tend to find that I hop between the two as and when. Some of you will just always use inches and likewise some of you will always want to use centimeters. So I'm gonna go okay. And let's pop my card on my mat so I can get a bit of a better measure. So it's very slightly 
under that 8 inches. So I'm going to pop that whip up to just under our 8 inches. So it's bigger than eight, uh, 7 and 3 quarters, but it's not quite the 8. And let's go about there. Okay. So, there's our plank. We're going to go OK. OK. OK again. Now we're going to go to Add, because now we need our other word. Pattern, text. Choose the same font or different one. It's entirely up to you. OK. Add that again. Now this time, we're going to pop that underneath and you want it to very slightly overlap. Now, bear in mind that our um, object is going to resize from the centre so you don't have to get it perfect because you're going to end up moving it down anyway. So, let's resize that. I'm going to line that up so I want that K to join to the end of that U and then we want to check that the T kind of lines up with the inside of our Y. Let me just see if I can drop that um, light down a little just so you can see a little bit better. So, one of the benefits of doing this is we can do that. And let's just drop down that gamma just a touch and the brightness. So hopefully you can see a little bit more. Oh, not quite that far. But it might work. Let's try that for a sec. There we go. So now you can see the word a bit clearer. So you can see that our T is lining up with the inside of our Y. The H is lining up with the inside of the Y. Okay, so your only real weak point of your design is going to be between the and there okay so let's go okay at that and we can try and kind of bridge those gaps a little bit okay so before i go too far i'm going to weld those two together so to do that we're going to go into our multi-select we can select everything because the, those are the only two shapes on the mat so we can go okay and then back into object edit and we're just going to use the solid circle and triangle to weld it's going to give you a preview of what it's going to look like and when you're happy you can just tap ok and then it's welded now one of the things you're going to notice if you do this in canvas as opposed to do it on your machine is these are going to be individual shapes so where there's a gap between the N and the O just there, that's going to be one shape. That's going to be one shape because there's a gap there and that's going to be one shape. Okay, so that's just something to bear in mind. So at this point, I'm going to go OK. Now, if we were to cut this out at the moment, it's going to do a lovely job of just cutting straight out of our card. And what we actually want to do is actually have that welded to our card. So, this is where you're going to have to get a little bit clever in terms of <coughs> sending it to canvas. So, what I'm going to do very quickly is just swap my controls onto my iPad so that I can show you the screen. Do, do, do. Okay. So... Let's open up Canvas, and when that's open, I'll switch you to Display. So, so far, for those of you that are late joining, we've done our Thank and our You. 
and we've welded the two together. We want to cut that from our card in such a way that it's going to be joint to our actual card base. And then we're going to decorate over the top of that. So canvas is being a bit slow this morning, so just bear, um, bear with it. <laughs> okay. Let's close that. So over to the display. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see that a little bit better. So you want to have canvas open on a new document and then I'll show you what we do on a scan and cut. So we're going to go OK. Back to where we've got our add edit and down here we've got save. When we tap save it's then going to give us the option of where we're saving to. Now because we want to carry on editing this on our display we can then use the little canvas button. So that's going to put it up into the cloud and we're going to be good to go. Back to our display and let's bring that in. So I'm going to go File, Import from your cutting machine and FCM. And we have our word. So let's give ourselves a guide to work to. So I can see that from here, my width of my card is about 200 mil, and of course you can change dimensions if you want. And I'm just going to drag that down because it actually goes well beyond that mat. So if I do that, now our halfway point, I'm just going to mark with a little line. I think let's go for that one and that's going to be around about your eight inches so about here and let's take that out to there and double click just to finish off that line so that's just there as a guide for us now depending on how you want your card to look you're probably going to want to rotate that thank you in some direction or another so first of all we're going to lock our guide shape and our little guide mark that we did here so that means i can't accidentally click on it or move it but what you can then find is that you can't get to the word underneath so all you need to do is just unlock that for a sec drop it all the way down to the bottom take it out of the group. So it takes two actions, a click down to the bottom and click and drag down to the bottom and another click and drag to take it out of that group, lock it and then we can get to our word. So what we could do is we could rotate it and I'm going to press and hold shift when rotating, that's going to lock it to the 90 degrees so we could have it that way up which means that we're going to have this solid bit here, solid bit here, but it's going to be quite open here and on this fold. Or we can rotate it around again so that we have like um, a tenfold card. Which I think in our case is actually going to work better. Now what we need to do is we need to actually open up that line so that it welds to it. So what you could do is you could spend a lot of time drawing a rectangle, welding it and all the rest of it. But let's make it a little bit easier for ourselves, shall we? And we're going to draw a rectangle. And we want to make it slightly shorter than our text. we're going to take it up to the edge of our card we can then squidge that down and just inside the text again okay 
So all we want to be left with are these inside sections here. Now, when we get to these bits, we might have to treat these a bit different, so we'll see how it goes. So just in case we um, need it again, what I would say is just do yourself a little favour at this stage. Duplicate your thank you and just hide it. Okay. Now, our rectangle that we've just drawn is on top and we need it to be underneath. So again, I'm going to drag that down and let's just have that guide shape pop back down to the bottom for us and lock it again. So we've got our rectangle. Press and hold shift and we're going to get our text there. Okay. Now, if at this point you think, actually, it just needs to nudge or whatever, you can do that. But just for speed, I'm just going to go back to edit. And I want to subtract it from the back. Okay. So that's going to give you all these shapes here. Now, you're going to notice that your holes vanished here. Try not to worry about that at this point. But you should have something that looks like this. Now... Obviously, the ones on the end do need to change very slightly because we don't want to be cutting down the side of our card if we can help it. For starters, you never know if you're going to get that alignment perfectly on. So we can always just tweak that slightly. So, to help us out a bit more, how about I show you another trick? So I'm going to unlo unlock that background shape and let's give it a different line colour so let's say blue actually I use blue too much for drawing so let's go green that's something fairly bright and I'm going to lock that back and back again so that I can see where my black lines are so we're going to sort out this shape here first and when we go to do that it's like oh but it's all one so you can use divide to kind of pull those all apart but first of all let's click on a node so we're going to see here that it's highlighting this line here well that isn't where we want to do our break so let's go to our next node that's going to this point here and we want that to be open so we're just going to use our little open icon at the top there so if ever you've wondered what that button does that's what it does Okay, so now the next trick is going to be to get hold of that line there. So this can sometimes be a little tricky, to say the least. So let's get that one. And I'm just going to see if I can get it to just drag out this way a little bit, just to see if I can get hold of that one. There we go, got hold of that, and we're going to open that one. And when I'm doing this, I'm holding shift so that it should keep it straight. Doesn't always work, but there we go. And I'm going to take that note there, and I'm going to join that back up to that Y. Now, it doesn't matter that those two points are only overlapping, they're not actually a full cut. Because what we need to do next is we just need to pull these in a little so that it's not sitting right on this edge. So I'm going to click again. Let's take this note here. And we can actually use our, our keyboard keys to just nudge that back. So it doesn't have to massively nudge back. just enough it's not going to be quite on that edge what we'll then do is we'll finish off those cuts by hand just so that we're not accidentally damaging our mat and we should have something that looks like this now we can go across the other side and we're going to do the same on this side. So click again to get to those nodes. Find which node it is that's going to light up this line blue. Open it up. 
this one's going to be a bit easier so we can just nudge those nodes back and that's in line with our K so we should be good to go so now let's sort out the center of our O and I'm just going to pick an oval Come here. There we go. Rotate it round. So again, press and hold shift to lock that rotation. Going to let go of shift to do that scaling. And we can pop that into the middle of the O. Now looking at this, it looks like it just needs a little bit of a tuck down to make that O look a little bit better. And a tuck that way. And we'll click off it and we've also got our A to treat the same way so triangle bring it in press and hold shift so take it round to the right way if it moves after you let go of shift just nudge it back gonna pop it so the apex is just there drag it into roughly where that bottom of that A should be. So if you look at your H as a clue, and then we're going to drag that down halfway. So a little bit more, and you want to get your angle more or less the same as what you're. There we go. And then we're going to get that in the middle. Not looking too bad. Then we need our trapezium, which we usually use for our glue tabs, but on this occasion. And I'll probably scroll right past it. There we go. It's up one. And again, shift and rotate. Size that down, size it down, okay, so with your trapezium you're going to want to change your nodes a bit, so if you've done all that other stuff it's, it's really quite simple. So. Let's nudge those out. So again, I'm just using my keyboard. I'm not doing anything fancy. These are going to want to come in. So it's following that same angle. And we'll sort out the triangle in a minute, just so that that line then stays. So I'm going to get the angle right first. Then if I press and hold shift and click on another node, I can move two nodes at once. Okay. Right, let's just do that. And that's looking pretty good. But obviously our O here would have a curve. Now there's a few ways that you could do this. You could use nodes to kind of mimic that. Or if you want to, let's do it a little bit of a simpler way. Let's grab my circle size it down so it's more or less the kind of curve that we want so that would fit back there that's going to drag it across to back there As long as it kind of meets in these points here and here, then you should be good to go. Press and hold shift, click your little trapezium to edit, and we're going to use that subtract function again. Let's take that out, and we then have our A 
and the centre part. Oh! Now, obviously, at the moment, these are all going to be kind of loose, but we still want to, to have them cut out. So, let's have a, a look at how that's going. So, that's going to be spot on for what I need, I think. Because these all need to seal up here, even though it looks a bit odd. Um, that could have been done a little bit better, but that's fine. For what I have time for. Okay. So, now that we've done that, we can get rid of our guide shapes and also um, the duplicate copy that we kind of got hidden away. Let's just delete that. We need to unlock before we try and delete anything else. So that we've just got our thank you ready to go. We can transfer that to our scan and cut via Wi Fi as usual. That's going to go OK. And since the update on Macs, this bit stays open and it's not closed. So just go to cancel. On there, even though it seems kind of a bit counterintuitive. Okay, so let's go back and see any comments. No, okay. So we now don't need this anymore, so we can go home to reset, retrieve, and we're going to go from the cloud. And there we go. So, I have loaded my card onto my mat. And load my mat into the machine. Okay. So I'm going to do a background scan now, just to check that everything is okay. Check that, you know, we're on target for where our lines finish and so forth. Okay, so if ever you're not certain, we can go to edit, we can go to zoom, and we can have a look. Now, at the moment, these are all individual, so you can see this red box is in the middle. So that's kind of your first warning to say something's not quite right. But I can also see little hints of the lines here. So what I want to do is just move either that or your card across. Now, because my card is going to be quite tight fitting, I'm just going to move that in one inch so it's going to make it a little bit easier. So then we can access both edges. So that's why we do that. So again, I'm going to go OK and just do another background scan. Okay, I'm going to go to edit, multi-select, select everything because we know that everything needs to stay locked together. Object edit and group. So that means that we don't accidentally lose pieces. Then we can move things around. So I'm going to go into zoom and I can move that across. Too far now. Okay. Now, if you're still slightly concerned whether that's going to fit or not, don't be afraid to just go into object edit, resize, and we can just resize that group just down just a touch so that it's sitting within that cut bank. Okay. We can always snip a little bit more, but we can't save our mat if we accidentally cut through. 
through it in terms of going off the edge of our card. So let's go. Okay, hit that. I'm happy. Okay, again. Okay, again. And we're going to choose what we're going to do with it. So, given that we've done all that lovely cut work, it'd be a change. It's a shame if we didn't cut it out. I'm going to use my black auto blade for this. And the reason it is, they're all pretty basic shapes. So, there's nothing in there that's going to require the vinyl auto blade. Okay. I'm going to light my cut pressure up one. And let's go. So this is where you can see that the cutting actually goes a bit of a, a weird way round. Oh, let me get the right button. There we go. So I hope you all had a lovely weekend and we'd love to see what coronation makes you made especially if you did it with scan and cut and you can pop those up in the group so a couple of housekeeping things while that's cutting so we do have a new online store which is plannercraft.co.uk it's very hard to after the game for so long no code to have, suddenly have a code so on there you, at the moment you'll find the april magazine uh, may is due to go up by the end of the week you will also find some digital goodies as well as our next workshop which is all about creating your own craft supplies so I'm just going to very gently just see if that cut all the way through sometimes if you've done cuts up towards the edge it tends to go a little bit light almost like it knows <laughs> so I'm just going to pop that through again Also, for those of you that were on our either our Buy Me A Coffee subscription or on um, the Creative Fabrica subscription, we are bringing subscriptions back. Um, so we will be able to do those very soon. That's weird. Facebook was being a bit weird then. Hey ho. Okay. So we're nearly there. We have lots of new exciting things that come into the shop soon as well. So you're going to be finding some more digital goodies that are going to be appearing on there. We're also going to move the um, fonts onto there too. And watch this space for digital copies of the books too. Okay. I just want to check that that's cut so because we've got 
let me just see if I can just move that camera up a bit. Uh, may just be a little bit off, so let's do the next bit up. So when you're checking, it's going to feel like you haven't cut, but if you just pop your thumb and kind of pull back, you should be able to see that you've kind of got like a little flap. And as long as you've got that, you should be okay. And check the other side too. And that's looking pretty good. So we should be okay, fingers crossed. Now, you do want to go a bit more careful when we're taking this from the mat. So, because obviously you've got a lot of kind of fragile structures that are going to be welding. So, particularly if you use finer fonts. But you should have something that looks a bit like that. So let's pop back overhead. And there we go. So we've got our thank you. And I'm just going to take a normal pair of scissors and let's just snip this away. So I'm just going to tip that towards me. And I'm going to use it as a guide so that I can line up my scissors and snip. Okay. When you do the other side, it's a bit more tricky to do that because there isn't a lot there. So. But what you don't want to do is kind of use the end of your scissors to do that snip going in that direction. Otherwise you can actually do a little tear just in your card front. Okay. Let's do this one next. I'm going to line that up along that one. So even though it's an angle, we can still do that and snip. And then I'm just going to rotate that round. Main body is scissors. And just do little snips like so. So, we now have our thank you. So you could reinforce this with some acetate behind it. So if you're finding that your card is not particularly holding that well. And then just reinforce it with some acetate on the back and just apply your glue around your letters just so that it's got a really good strong bond to that acetate. But for this one, it's looking pretty good. So just to save me from keep knocking the mat, I'm just going to unload that for a second. And let's take these bits off. So I do want to do a couple of other little things before I go, just to kind of finish off the card. As I said, I did restick my mat just before I went live, so... I was kind of expecting it being a bit tough to get these bits off. <laughs> okay. So we know that our card is roughly 16 inches. So I'm going to do my fold at 8. I'm going to fold that inwards. I want to be gentle with it because it's a darker card. And let's do our score line this way too just so that we try and avoid any cracking now if your card is a colored throughout cardstock then you're fine to do just one way but if you have a printed cardstock without that extra little score sometimes you can find that you get like a white Cracking on your on the seam of your fold, which we don't want. Okay, so we've got a thank you, and we can pop in a liner into that, so that's going to make that pop out. Also, if you want to kind of have somewhere to hide away a um, 
that sentiment then you can do another temp fold for your insert too uh, I have not sent for a new mat yet silly me well if not don't forget you've got the discount code whichever way you want to order your mat so given that I scored this at 8 and it's slightly shy of your 16 inches you can have a bit of an overhang Let's just quickly grab a trimmer and you want there to be a little bit of an overhang but not too much <laughs> so only about a couple mil in it so like so and there we go we have our card so I thought it'd be fun to kind of put um, some little tools and things on uh, so I will see how much I get done in the rest of the hour. Then on Friday, you're going to have a bit of a, a quicker pre-recorded session. So you may just find another thank you card in that one too. So I'm going to start off with a nice piece of yellow card because I want to do like a, a tape measure kind of for the card work. I'm going to try and do a few different tools and things. So some of them I'll use the designs that are already in the scanning cut, but for the ruler, this is going to be another bit of a do it yourself. So I'm going to get OK, home and reset. And I'm just going to load my map. Okay, let's change view to get the right one. I really need to rename these. There we go. So, pattern, basic shapes, and I want a long thin rectangle. So, BAA022. Grab that from the map. And I'm going to use my ratio function. So that should be blue, and then I can alter them independently. Now, again, because I'm going to be measuring something, I'm going to go to millimetres this time. And I just so happen to have ready to hand a ruler. Ah, uh, not that one. <laughs> there we go. That one. So I was thinking it'd be really cool to kind of do the T. It's like a couple of little tape measures. So we need one that is about three and a half centimetres by one. So let's do that first. So it's 10 mil.
There we go. Battery died. <laughs> so, as I was saying, I've now done my two lots of tape measure, so I could just do little notches. And hopefully that's back. So should be about probably about 20 seconds by the time that it kind of gets back to you. So as I was saying, we could do the notches by hand or we can do them on our machine. So the choice is yours. Now because it's a tape measure, it's going to look a lot better if you do do it through um the machine as opposed to doing it by hand. But obviously if we do that in our machine. It's also going to do a black line around the outside of our tape measure, which we may or may not want. So, again, I'm going to save that to canvas. Get OK. And hopefully sound should be back if somebody can let me know. OK, so Sue's got sound back. Brilliant. Thank you, Sue, for letting me know. Okay, so I'm going to go back to canvas, go to display. Now, I'm just going to hide these bits for a minute because I still want to have those available. Um, I'll try and do this as a download for you. So let's just group those and I'll call that group. Thank you. Without the S, we'll be good. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. So even though we've already done one import, we can import again. So never think that because you've got one thing that you haven't, you know, kind of got the option to that in. So this is going to be yellow. So I can put that in yellow for now so that I can see my tape measure. So the outside of my shapes are, are cut and they're only cut. Now let's do drawing so I'm just using command and plus just to zoom in control and plus should also work on a PC so if we go to use our pen tool you can see it's going to try and snap this end point here now my advice to you is kind of let it and then we're going to go along the line here and I'm trying to get that so it's more or less straight and click again okay so we can see that we've got in line here and we can go duplicate 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 okay until you've got however many lines you want so let's do a few I'm going to select all those shapes and I'm going to go into edit I'm going to align that to the top, so now we have our little set of lines. Now, even if we squidge all these in, our lines aren't going to get thinner because they're just lines. So we can just go like that. And then they're all going to be nice and evenly spaced. We can bring this in on this end here. And we can decide how long you want those lines to be. So if you want to do big long lines, you can do that. You don't have to put any numbers on. So I'm just going to group those for now. So let's undo that so you can get just the lines. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes to get all the lines to do this next bit. So if you're struggling, just use that duplicate function again. It's going to give you another group. There we go. And we know that part of our upright of our T is actually going to go underneath so we only need to worry about that bottom bit like so looking good now all those groups at the moment are still set to draw and they're all set to cut so we need to set it to draw that is what I'm trying to say I'm doing a very bad job of it because I also need to put my teeth down so I'm just going to set those to blue because we know then that they are draw only lines. Makes no difference to the actual drawing. So I'm just going to get that group and just bring that in just a little bit just so it's going to look a bit more 
more centered. Okay, looking pretty good. So as those are the only things that we can see, we can send those so transfer by the Wi-Fi. Okay. No, we let me get to the right one. <laughs> there. Okay. So I've got my other card on my map. And because it, they're just little things, it doesn't really matter how we've loaded it onto our mat. So again, because we've added those little line details, we now don't need these. So I can just go reset, bring in, and bring in from the cloud. Now, generally, what is a good idea is to do your drawing first and your cut second. Unless it's really, really ultra complicated draw. So, do you want a sneak peek of something that I'm doing a video on for Friday? I'll be naughty. I'll just sneak it in. <laughs> so, let's go to this one. <laughs> And we have a castle lot of 100 gel pens. So, there is going to be discount code that I will put up. But that's Fridays, but I'm just like, ah, oh, I want to tease them. <laughs> okay, so, we have lots and lots of pens to choose from. But I'm just going to go for a nice plain black start with anyway. Okay. Let's pop this down there. And I'm going to use my 3D fun prints pen holder. So I just check that that's nice and loose, ready to put the pen in. Now, before I do that, let me just check my pens are working. Important than that. <laughs> Nothing worse than having forgotten that step and then doing some drawing and going, why is it not actually doing anything? So, I'm just going to load that in. I do apply a bit of pressure onto the end of the pen as I do that, which is why I've got my hand in that kind of position. And I want to make sure that you can hear that click. As long as you can hear that, it's in the right place. I'm going to pop that into my pen holder. So let's just go back to the overhead. And I'm going to move that down a bit so, so that you can see. There we go. So the square bit is at the back and goes flat against the back of the carriage. I'm going to pop it in, don't push it too hard, just gently let it rest in there. And again, if your lever offers any resistance, just give the, the holder itself a wiggle. Don't try and force it because otherwise that can be when you can break your carriage and we don't want that. Okay, so. I'm going to go, okay, please select and draw, and I'm going to just very quickly do that. So you should have something that looks like this where we've got our lines drawn. Now mine's done a little blob there, but that's just a new pen. Okay, so now we can pop that out. If you have any missed lines, you can just send it around again. But that's perfect. They're not needed. 
bottom of my black cord. Look. Now, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go to cut. And because my blade is starting to play up a little and it's not getting through first time, I'm just going to go into my settings and I'm just going to take my cut amount up. So if you're finding that, if you're finding it's going to go around twice, then just pop that cut amount up and you should find that, that sorts it out for you. Okay. And let's go for it there. one side in case I need it for any of the other shapes and where you've got something like this that's a little bit smaller and a bit more fiddly just get a metal spatula it could be the cricket one it could be any other brand or it could be as like I'm doing just a good old artist pipe knife there we go and let's pop So if you wanted to, you don't necessarily have to do every single letter. It could be that you want to just use that upper on the T, you could use the horizontal on the H, and so on and so forth. If you want to do all the bits, then what I would say is actually use a really long strip, do all your lines, and then kind of snip it where you need to. Okay. So, very quickly, I'm just going to get... And you're going to either do the lines up like that or down like that choice yours. I think I'm going to go up. Okay. And I'm very careful to spread away any excess as well so it doesn't mark the back of the card. Now, we could finish that off with a little bit of silver if we wanted to or we could just go for a great card. There. I think I'm just going to go for a little bit grey. Don't forget to stick the pin back in your glue. And just to finish off that little section, I'm going to go home to reset pattern basic shape and then let's look down towards the bottom just want some it's kind of a shorter version of that one that would do perfect so you can actually need that only at 10 mil not 100 mil because otherwise that's going to be huge I might need two of them. Okay. I'm going to set that onto my mat and let's just very quickly cut those out.
Now if you've got a tiny hole punch, what I would say is just give those a little punch in the middle so they cut out and it will look like that you've done little rabbits. So let's pop that out. So we've got one there. So you can choose with how much of this you want to actually use if you want to trim off a little bit extra. But the idea is it's going to look like the end of our tape measure. So it's a good way of just covering up a little bit of the blob. So I'm just going to trim off a fraction of this end here. A little bit of glue. You can always straighten it up after because that's about as straight as a <laughs> there we go. I'm going to do the same here, so just snip about two to three mil natural shape. I'm going to put a little bit. In there, just to hold that in place. Okay. And once those are kind of set a little bit, you'll be able to just trim that off. And we have the start of our card. So you could use lots of different tools going across. If you want to do it all tape measures, that's really up to you. But I have found out some designs that I can use to then decorate this. So what I'm going to do, is means we're kind of running a bit over, is I'll do this offline and then just pop that up on an image for you so you can see the finished card. So I have actually done this for somebody that has kind of an interest in carpentry, in case you were wondering why I like the random tape measure. So I've also got things like um, scissors, a pencil, some cogs, and also I'm uh, going to use one of the photo corners that's kind of a set square. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed that. and. Um, if there's something that you want me to kind of do a little bit of a focus on, then do let me know. You can reach me lots of ways. So whether that's email or Facebook message um, to the pages, and then we can come back and show you that. Thank you, Thea. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. As I said, do keep an eye out for the subscription going live, and I was going to very quickly show you last month's magazine but I left it in the frame because I'm like that today <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to seeing all your cards with your lovely cut letters do put them in the group we're a very friendly bunch so don't be afraid of sharing things you know we, do, we, we don't have any bullying in our group and I won't stand for it that's it <laughs> so Take care, uh, and I will see you on Friday when it will be a pre-recorded session. Um, but I will be live in the comments to help with any questions. And I look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now.